So tell us a little bit about your whole training and how you kind of went along from being a, a traditional researcher to now kind of an entrepreneur. Well, thank you. My, I have spent almost all the several decades of my life interested in uh, phytonutrients that are lipid soluble. Of mm -hmm. course, they're water soluble phytonutrients, they're minerals, but I focus on the lipid soluble phytonutrient. You can see the thread across uh, uh, my career. And when I first came to University of Massachusetts, I was fascinated because I visit my original home Malaysia and they were processing palm oil and palm oil is very reddish color and then I found out that they bleached the color so that the palm oil would then look like corn oil light yellow color like that so I thought oh what is that bleach thing and I heard that it was uh, carotene I said oh what a waste that would bleach it out in order to use the oil so that was my first starter in it so the first 10 years of my career I was working on carotene carotenoids like that and then when I got a grant from the Malaysian government, I would remove all the triglyceride vegetable oil. Then I would extract all the carotenoid. And then I found out that it's about half a percent of something in there that didn't go away. That isn't the oil or the tocotri or the carotenoid. And then I reported it to the Malaysian government. They said, oh, these are just vitamin E. So I would look for the vitamin E thinking it would be alpha tocopherol because I was told that. Then I found four peaks. I said that one of them matches alpha tocopherol. The other three didn't. So that was uh, my initiation to vitamin E of the lesser known compound called tocotri. You know, they're about 75% tocotri and 25% tocopherol. There was a start. And with that, I then swim on to do fine tocotrieno in rice bran oil like that. Then we did begin to do animal study and clinical trials. Essentially, when I did the trial, I dropped tocotrieno because on plant sources, they're about 25 to 50% tocopherol. The other 50 to 75% tocotrieno. It, it sounds innocuous because they come together, but then we discovered that the tocopherol interferes with the function of tocotrieno because they're mm. similar to each other. Then I said, oh, I'm going to stop this. So I went back to my first love. My first love was carotenoid. And I found out that the Harvard professor discovered that a lutein was back on the retina of the eye. Now we all know that it's for macular degeneration. I went to South America and looked for the giant marigold, the petal I extract this. I did find the giant marigold. If you I download a copy of my book, it's free of charge. I described that of a younger me. Then I, I found out this uh, uh, lutein for marigold. This is actually a fate of my life. 30 feet mm -hmm. away from me, anato. Mm -hmm. This plant here, this was taken in Ecuador, and and this plant here, the Incas use it to color their body. This is an Inca child coloring the head. Uh, you can see uh, people using it for markings on the, their things in society. I uh, like that. And in the West, we simply just use the anato color for coloring cheeses and meats. To have it short, that color is also a carotenoid. So I surmise because of my background in carotenoid, I said, wow, they have unconjugated double bond, highly reactive, very hard to keep stable, even more reactive than fish oil, the omega-3 position. So then I said, oh, it must be something that is protecting the antioxidation like that. Now, mm. carotenoids that we know, like lycopene in tomato, so you can make the, uh, right. you can make Italian sauce, they don't go away easily. Or if you cook a carrot, the beta carotin doesn't get destroyed easily. Or if you're in New New England to have astaxanthin in lobster, the color still retained because they're protected by the cytoplasm or they're bound to protein. So I can only surmise it's an antioxidant. I was thinking it's it probably a polyphenol. It's just a beautiful story. I, I lucked out and I'm happy I stumbled on this. And then I found out that it was not a polyphenol. And as it turned out, it's a vitamin E molecule, surprisingly. And even more surprisingly, it's tocotrienol. And then most surprisingly, it only contained tocotrienol without tocopherol. Then I said, oh, I got to look at this closer. This is only tocotrienol. I don't have the tocopherol to interfere with the biologic function. I begin to extract them. So that set the path. And the original professor that discovered tocotrienol, they have this enormous function, was at University of Wisconsin. I immediately called him and he said, Barry, if tocotrienol is supposed to mitigate chronic condition, you're not though tocotrienol better do. But if if not, then all cause for tocotrino function is lost. That was 1989-1990. So I've stayed with it all my life, only from they branch out to GG and CoQ10, but otherwise still stay with tocotrino. So that's my little story about that.